The concern is growing here in western Washington, even though the eastern half of the state remains the primary focus for forest health and fire. From a hill in Kittitas County within sight of I-90 is just one story of the battle between insects and trees. In this DNR photo of the hill in the fall of 2018, all those gray trees are dying Douglas fir. It was shocking to me, having not seen a tussock moth outbreak before, how many acres just instantly turned gray from green. Larry Leach is a forester with the DNR's southeast region. The moth's caterpillars were detected in early 2018. The trees went from thriving to dying. Just over the course of the summer. DNR's forest health report for 2020 focuses a lot on insects and disease. This graphic shows how after seeing a sharp decline in 2015, a severe drought year, the overall total of insect and disease damage numbers started to climb again through 2019. 2020 is an asterisk because COVID precautions kept this airplane from flying over the state to make its annual survey, the first gap since 1947. This is why these photos are so important. This image from 2015, that drought year. By 2019, you can see yellow dots, each one a lodgepole pine succumbing to mountain pine beetle. Scientists now trying to fill in partly with satellite photos, but there are dozens of bugs and fungi that affect the forest. In western Washington, the root disease is just as impactful, if not more, uh, as it is on the east side. Glenn Kohler is the state's forest entomologist. He studies bugs and disease. In this stand, the moth didn't affect the ponderosa pine and some of the Douglas firs survive, but trees under stress become vulnerable. And if with climate change we have more frequent drought, we have more intense drought. So the tussock moth infestation is starting to wane. But in Seattle on maple trees, we're seeing an increase in a non-native fungus called sooty bark disease that they're keeping a close eye on. In Edmonds, Glenn Farley, King 5 News.